Okay. <coughs> so I was really undecided what, what story I wanted to tell today to you. And uh, I finally decided to talk about visual story discovery. And I'll try to explain in a moment what I mean by visual story discovery. Uh, let me see if I can use this. Um, so we are here mostly to talk about visual storytelling. And OK, that's awesome. We all love it. I love it. I think it's one of the greatest development of the last few years, or hundreds of years, Scott. Um, millennia. And, but how do we get to the data story in the first place? That's, um, I, I am an engineer by training. I work in an engineering school. So I am very much interested in building tools, right? And so I'm really intrigued by the idea of how do we actually help people like those guys at ProPublica or other venues um, come up with, with good stories or build good stories in the first pl place. Um, so what is behind the curtain of visual storytelling? Well, the, the, there's a lot of stuff, a um, lot of stuff related to data, right? So searching for the right data set, gathering the data set, manipulation of this data set, transformation, a lot of analysis. And this is, of course, not linear. You do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, then you step back. So it's very complex and, and troublesome process. Um, so how do we help people generate great stories by looking at big and complex data sets? Uh, that's a question that um, I find really, really important and intriguing. So in my lab, um, I like to say that we focus on methods and applications to help people familiarize with data, understand its content, and discover new information. And we do this in a number of different applications, including healthcare, human rights, cybercrime, and investigative journalism. So the story I want to tell today um, stands mostly from our collaboration with investigative journalists. More specifically, I want to talk about our experience with the guys from ProPublica um, working on the analysis of millions of reviews coming from the review aggregator Yelp, and specifically those reviews that um, talk about doctors um, and, and, and medical facilities. It's, it's really fascinating, uh, but it's complex. It's very complex. There are more than one million reviews there, and it's not just that. It's a mix of text data, of course, and a lot of structured and unstructured data. Um, for instance, the rating that people give to, to a given doctor, uh, what they say, when they say it, um, where the reviewer comes from, where the business is, and so on. There are lots of variables out there and lots of text. So how do you actually help a journalist look into this data? Once again, the problem is not just that the data is big, it's also very complex. So how do you help a journalist look into this data and hopefully derive interesting stories to tell? So here are some of the tags that you can find in these reviews. I'm focusing on the negative ones because they attract more attention, but there are positive ones out there as well. So rudest office staff ever, also incompetent. I will settle for rude and competent or polite or, and incompetent. <laughs> His license should be revoked. Only thinks about money, long wait time and terrible doctor, waste of money. My husband bought me a one hour massage for Christmas and today they no longer exist. Scam, scam, scam. So you find a lot of these kind of interesting reviews. You can spend hours looking at them. <laughs> they are fun. So <laughs> um, some are spooky as well. When, when you look at what some doctors do, um, you won't believe it, OK? Um, I can show you some of them offline. So this is the main tool I want to talk about. It's the tool that um, they are currently using a ProPublica to look at these reviews. And it's called Revax, Review Explorer, not too original. And um, it's a simple interface. So what you see here, can you see my cursor? Yes, OK. So it's basically three main panels. On the left-hand side, you have some sort of faceted search mechanism. So what you see here, for instance, is um, the rating between one and five stars and how many reviews are in each rating. Um, oh, sorry, I just went. Yeah. 
um, the number of reviews, the responses, and if you, I'll show you later um, where the businesses are, the regions, and many, many other parameters. In the middle, you have a sample of the reviews, and on the right-hand side, you have a summary of the currently selected, uh, not filtered uh, reviews. Let me give a demo. I'll try to give a quick demo. Um, so here you see all the parameters that we have. So I was trying to do this on the slide. So we have the provider, the category, the state. As you can see, there are lots of reviews from California. Um, the stars, I have to remove this, sorry. This is going with my phone connection, so it's a little slow. Okay, so when you look at this interface, now you can start asking questions. For instance, I want to focus on negative reviews. So first of all, even before that, by looking at these distributions, you can get a sense of how the reviews distribute across different parameters. So there are way more five stars than one stars, for instance. Um, there are uh, way more reviews in California than in other states, and so on. There are way more reviews for general dentistry than any other medical specialty, and so on. So now let's see the, let imagine that I want to focus on negative reviews and try to see if I can find int anything interesting there. So when I click on one star reviews, so it takes a while to load. Now in the middle you have only reviews with one star. Here on the right hand side you have a sample of words that characterize reviews with one star. And even more interesting, here now the distributions change according to the current selection. So what you can see, for instance, is that Western Dental is problematic. It's way up there. This means that there are lots of negative reviews for Western Dental. So, oh, that's interesting. Let's click on Western Dental and try to see what kind of problems people talk about when they talk about Western Dental, okay? So this is exactly Um, what Charles Ernstein, Ernstein from ProPublica has been doing and is still doing, and he published a few months ago um, an article on NPR based on the analysis that he has done with uh, Revex, with this system. And just to give you a sense of the content that he managed to put in the article, um, dental patients really don't like Western dental. Not, in, not its name, Californian Clinic. I hate this place. One reviewer wrote on the rating site Yelp, or one of its locations in Phoenix, learn from my terrible experience and stay far, far away. In fact, the chain of low-cost dental clinics, which has more Yelp reviews than any other health, health provider, has been repeatedly, often brutally penned in some 3,000 online critiques 379 include the word horrible, it's average rating 1.8 out of five stars. So this, that's all information that he um, generated by using the tool. Here is another one. Patients on Yelp aren't fan of ubiquitous lab testing company, test diagnostics either. The word rude appeared in 13% of its 2,500 reviews, average stars to 2.7. It's like the seventh level of hell one reviewer wrote <laughs> of a quest lab, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. Okay? So that's fascinating. That's, that's amazing from my point of view. The fact that we can build tools that help people um, generate stories and then publish them in, um, um, in several venues, it's an, amazing, it's an amazing fact. And in fact, Revex and other tools that we are developing is currently used by other journalists and other organizations. So for instance, a recent article appeared in The Economist, um, thanks to this guy, Wade Zhu, um, analyzing uh, large sets of reviews coming from Rate My Professor. And um, that's particularly interesting from a university professor like me looking at students giving reviews to professors is, is, is pretty disappointing. <laughs> um, so I want to conclude with a few reflections coming from my experience. Uh, there are three main reflections. The first one is the difference between visualizations and visualization tools. So I think there is a lot of excitement about visualization. 
observing visualizations that communicate some information. And as I said, that's great. But from my point of view, I don't see a lot of emphasis on visualization tools. How do we actually help people coming up with great stories? And I think that's a very, very important kind of activity. Uh, for instance, we are developing a new tool that is called S3 that I'm going to demo today. We, I actually organized this demo on the fly. I was not aware of the fact that I could demo it. So later today, if you want to see it, is a, a, a new tool that allows to do some type of analysis that it was not possible to do with Revax. Um, the second reflection is using data to generate ideas and not truth. So this may seem a little, I'm sure it's a little controversial, but what I have noticed is that interactive data visualization tools that are meant to help people familiarize with data and discover information are actually creativity tools. So I think it is somewhat dangerous to think about visualization as a way to get to the truth of something. What normally happens is that what you get out of these tools is ideas, and ideas are very valuable, very, very valuable. So I really like this idea of data visualization as a creative tool. Even if, I guess for someone, this sounds a little bit like an heresy. And the last one, the, the one that it's more important for me is the relationship between academics and practitioners. I would really, really, really love to see more of this happening and um, so I've been in academia for many, many, many years. It's like almost 10 years now. And only recently I managed to set up these kind of collaborations. And the mere fact that we can collaborate with these kind of people and be somewhat successful is a huge achievement from my point of view in terms of collaboration between academia and practitioners. And I would love to see more of that happening. So please, let's talk and work and work more together, okay? And uh, if you want any tips on how to do that, I think I have plenty, there are lots of tricks, but I think the most important one is that you should never think about what, what is in here for me. It's about giving. When you collaborate with someone and you come from academia or other places, you should think about giving. I want to give you the best thing possible, and one way or another, this is going to return to you. So I want to conclude with a special thanks to Alberto Cairo, who actually introduced me to Scott and said, you guys should definitely meet. And, say, and, and he was right. He was right. So uh, thanks, Scott, for introducing me, uh, Charles. And wor working with Charles has been an amazing and is still an amazing experience. I learned so much working with him. And of course, uh, thanks to Yelp for providing this amazing data set. And thanks to my PhD students who are working on Revex and related, related tools. Uh, Christian Felix da Silva and Anshul Pandey, they are amazing, amazing students. So this concludes my talk. Thanks a lot. If you want to find anything about me, I am a little bit everywhere. And if you want to hear my voice, you will find me on data stories. <laughs> Okay, so just to make sure we get our lunch when it's nice and warm, let's, uh, let's have two questions. So we'll start with you, Chad. Oh, water. I know you just said we should think about what we're giving instead of what we're getting, but I, I want to know how I can get uh, RevX. Is it available to any journalist that wants it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> and, do we, and do we need to get, give, bring the Yelp data to you, or you can extract? If you type RevX on Google, yeah. you will find it and you can use it. Awesome, thank you. So Yelp uh, is at the top of my list uh, with other companies like LinkedIn that I think are sitting on an amazing amount of data that just isn't being put to work. Can you talk a little bit about your, uh, how you collaborated with Yelp and, um, and, and, and just tell a little bit, of, a bit about how, how you got into there? So it's very simple. We are not really collaborating with Yelp in the sense that we are working together on the problem. Yelp provides the data through ProPublica. Yeah, so have, that's the way. Okay, great. Let's uh, let's 
give one more hand here to Enrico. Thanks a lot. Thank you.